was born and raised in Queens, New York, raised by a single mother in a little apartment with three brothers. Grew up really poor, and when I say poor, I mean really poor. My earliest memories of a gourmet meal was what I'd call government cheese. It was a long box of cheese that would arrive, and literally said government cheese from the USDA. My mother always had a variety of health issues. Eventually, she ended up in a wheelchair. I made a decision at a very early age that I wasn't gonna let poverty dictate the rest of my future. When I was 16, I decided to drop out of high school. Everyone said, you're gonna ruin your life. But I knew that if I could get my GED and go to college as fast as humanly possible, I could accelerate my path out of poverty. I was working during the day, I would take classes at night, and then go home and take care of my mother. After college, I started working for the city of New York, and I would attend classes at night to get my law degree at Fordham. At 26 years old, I was appointed press secretary of New York City. I finally thought everything was gonna be okay. I had enough money to take care of my mother. And on my first day of the job, my mother died. I regret that my mother never got a chance to experience the benefits of the life that I've created. I was press secretary during the worst terrorist attack in history. I became the chief operating officer of the agency in charge of rebuilding the World Trade Center site. And the greatest professional honor of my life was to be involved in the rebuilding effort. It would become a defiant symbol of resiliency for New York and for the country. In 2004, I got an amazing opportunity to join the New York Jets. And over the next eight years, I held a number of different jobs, from helping build a new stadium to ultimately overseeing the business operations of the team. After a great run at the New York Jets, I decided that I was going to take the leap and become an entrepreneur. And that's when I teamed up with Steve Ross and started RSC Ventures. And now I'm the CEO of RSC Ventures and the vice chair of the Miami Dolphins. I don't invest in ideas, ideas are cheap. I invest in people, special people, who have what it takes to take that idea and go the distance. You come to visit me and it's like, boom, okay, let's go. Everybody needs something. We like to think we're the missing component. So we bring our real estate expertise, our sports expertise, our technology expertise, and we roll up our sleeves and we do whatever it takes to win. The entrepreneurs who go on Shark Tank, they're trying to make it and transcend. And I relate to that. I feel like my whole life has been about that. It's not about where you began, it's where you end up and how much distance you covered. When everything is on the line and the stakes are the highest, trust your instincts to make the final call. You know, I want to share a story about my last day at Cardoza High School and when I was 16 years old. Back then, when you, drop, when you dropped out, uh, you first had to run a gauntlet, which I like to think of as the academic version of a, of a walk of shame. Uh, before they would release you, you had to go to each classroom in session with your head down, and return your textbooks, and it was god-awfully humiliating. But um, I remember knocking on the door, shuffling into one of the classes, and sheepishly stretching out my hands with the book, and the teacher turned to me, and goes, oh, Higgins, what a waste. I'll see you at McDonald's, and kind of chuckled. I said, okay, I began to walk out. I was about to open the door, and I turned around, and I said, you know what? If you see me at McDonald's, it's because I bought it. And then I walked out. <laughs> My mother was very sick, and things were just getting worse, and I realized if I don't take matters in my own hands, no one else is going to do it. I made a decision when I was 16 that I'm going to drop out of high school, I'm going to get my GED, and I'm going to start college in two months. That single decision to kind of go an unconventional route set my entire life up for what I do now, which is you don't listen to the other people if they don't have any context into what's going on in your own home. Um, forge your own path and do what you need to do under the circumstances.